Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, so this video is gonna be a Q&A. I did ask you guys over on my Instagram to ask me some questions to answer and I got quite a few. So let's get into the questions. We've got some good ones here. What would be the first thing you'd say to an unbeliever about Jesus? I think the first thing I would say to an unbeliever about Jesus is Jesus loves you. I feel like so many people are lacking that love in their life. I was an unbeliever once and just being able to hear the words that someone loves me, that Jesus loves me, that would have done so much good for me. So that would be the first thing that I would say to an unbeliever about Jesus. Is your family originally from Germany? This is a weird question because I'm not from Germany at all. I have no ancestors that originated from Germany. I was born and raised in Canada and so was my family. <laughs> I think I had like some ancestors in France and England. My husband always makes fun of me because I say it's Anglo-Saxon. I think it's Anglo-Saxon, I don't know. But that is kind of like where my family tree is descended from. But if I ask my parents where I'm from, they have no clue. Why so cute? Moving on, favorite Bible verse currently. My favorite Bible verse, I currently have two, and the first one is Psalm 23, one. The Lord is my shepherd, I have all that I need. I love that one. And the second one is Psalm 139, eight. And it says, when I go up to heaven, you are there. When I go down to the depths, you are there. And I love that verse so much because no matter where we are in life, whether it's in the highest point of our life or the lowest of lows, God is always there. He never abandons us. So that's why I love that one. Also, I learned about that verse from the show The Chosen. If you haven't watched it, I recommend it. It's absolutely fantastic. I've watched it three times. The first time we went and did it for a Bible study at my church. The second time my mother-in-law and I did not want to wait for our next Bible study session at the church. So we started binge watching it and it was really good. So I had to watch it at Bible study. I watched it at home and then I got my husband into it as well and we watched all of it. So I've watched it three times. What's your favorite book in the Bible? Right now I feel like my favorite book in the Bible I have a couple. John is absolutely fantastic, but Romans, I just did a Bible study in Romans and it's become my favorite book. Before that, it was Ephesians. I also like Proverbs. The Psalms is also great. The whole Bible was absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Advice for Christian teenagers. This is a good one. I was not Christian when I was a teenager, so I don't know what it's like to be a Christian teenager, but what I would recommend for any teenager is don't focus on the boys. Focus on schooling. Spend your time doing your schoolwork. Spend your time with your friends. And also just like make sure that you have a plan to set you up for life because I went to college really late. It set me back. What I would recommend, don't worry about the boys. Same with girls, if you're a boy, don't worry about the girls. Focus on getting your life together. Focus on your relationship with God and with Jesus. Everything else can wait, they're just distractions. Most of the time, most of the time, you're not gonna end up with the person you were with in high school anyway. What's your style? I usually wear gym wear from Amazon or pajamas. That's pretty much my style. Style. And I also have hand-me-downs. I don't really buy any new clothes for myself. I get my sister-in-law's hand-me-downs. I get my sister's hand-me-downs because they have great style. I don't really need to buy anything. I stick to the same kind of outfits. Have you ever had a cat? I have had a cat once. We had a couple. I lived on a farm when I was younger and we had barn cats. Our two barn cats had kittens together. They had three kittens and my sister and I, we loved these kittens so much. My mom's allergic, so they had to stay outside, which they're barn cats, they're totally fine with. But one day my sister and I, we came back from school and we had been told that all three of them passed away in the same day. We were told one got picked up by a hawk, another one got run over. I don't know what happened to the other one, he ran away. Lo and behold, when I became an adult, I asked my brother's dad, what happened to the kittens? Like what actually happened? And he's like, yeah, accidentally ran over too. What? What? You killed my cats? When I moved into my husband's family's house, they had a cat. I guess he was kind of my cat by adoption. Other than that, I'm more of a dog person. What are your hobbies? I love to read. I also love going for walks and I love video games. I don't really do much else. They're pretty boring to be honest. But video games are my absolute favorite. Reading, I was obsessed with reading. I'll go through a stage where I'm like reading all the time, like just binging books. And then I'll go through another stage where I don't touch a book for months. It's very weird. I'm very much that kind of person that is like obsessed with something for a very long time. And then something happens, I get out of the routine and then I become not obsessed with it. What's the color of your eyes? They look pretty. My eyes are blue. <laughs> this one's a really good one. 
How did you find such strong faith when you didn't believe before? I think this is such a good question. If you didn't watch my testimony video, I was an atheist till I was 21. And I think because I was atheist and because I learned about Jesus now, my faith is so strong because I have known what it was like to not have faith and not have hope. I knew what it was like to be apart from God and without God fully. And so now that I've experienced the hope and love and just joy of Jesus, I don't wanna go back to that. I wanna stay where I am and I wanna grow and become even more so, more joyous, more happy. How I found such strong faith is just by reading the Bible, finding out more about who Jesus is and what he's done for me. And that has just been the foundation of my faith. But my faith didn't really start getting strong until April of this year. Before that, I was very, very lukewarm. I'm not afraid to admit that. <laughs> Do you believe that cleanliness is next to godliness? <laughs> I think SpongeBob said that, did he not? Aye, aye, Captain! Do you like to read? If so, what books do you like? This goes hand in hand with the hobby question. I do like to read books. My favorite absolute genre of book is fantasy books. I'm obsessed with fantasy books. I have a quote from one of Sarah J. Mass's books on my ribs. To the stars who listen and the dreams that are answered. All the Accord of Mist and Fury fans will know that one, but yes, I'm an absolute fan of fantasy books. I haven't read any in a long time. I started reading a Jennifer L. Amrantrope book like months ago and I couldn't get through it. It was just really, really hard. They were very sexual scenes and I had a hard time reading through them. So I put them down. Right now I'm in the middle of reading Daisy Jones and the Six, but even then I'm out of that like reading phase. I'm not in like the phase where I'm reading constantly and binging books. I think I've gotten like one chapter in and that was like weeks ago. I'm in the not kind of reading phase. How did you meet your husband? I met my husband through his sister actually and my sister. My sister and Nate, they were both musicians and they knew of each other and I used to go to his sister for like getting my nails and my eyelashes done and all that stuff for years before I even met Nate. So I kind of found out about him through her and my sister. And it wasn't until years later where I was single and then he was single that we kind of connected on Instagram. And then ever since then, it's been history. This is gonna be my last question for this video. But this person asked, how can a person give God his work and include prayer into a nine to five job? I think just making sure that you're doing everything for God, let everything you do be for the glory of God. It's easy to pray. Just talk to God as if he's your friend. That's like the easiest way. If you're struggling with prayer, just talk to him. For me, I talk to God on my way to work. I talk to God when I'm getting ready. I just pray. And it doesn't mean you have to say anything out loud. God knows your heart. All you have to do is talk in your head. Having a nine to five job, I have a nine to five job. There's nothing that's preventing you from spending time with God. Nine to five, that's eight hours of your day. You have the rest of your day to spend time with God in prayer, in the word and everything. You can give your work to God by doing it the best of your ability and having an attitude of service. Offer your work as like a form of worship to God. Always do everything for the glory of God. Oh, hello. <laughs> hello. This is my dog, Arwin. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I think my next video is going to be something more faith-based, um, but I appreciate all the questions. Thank you guys so much for asking them. Arwin's bringing me her, oh, she was bringing me her dino. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I'll catch you at the next one. As Michael Scott would say, catch you on the flippity flip. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And yes, we have the dino now. So I gotta go play with Arwin. Have a great day, guys. <laughs>